I first read about the self-taught mathematical genius Srinivasa Ramanujan in Nehru's discovery of India. Less than a decade later, 1987, Ramanujan invaded my thoughts again, this time in the form of an article in the New York Times titled An Isolated Genius Has Given His Due. I felt proud as an Indian and also deeply touched by Ramanujan's tragic and compelling life story, snatched away so cruelly at the young age of 32, almost as it were conveying the romance of an unrealized promise. Then PBS television in America brought out a fascinating and absorbing documentary called The Man Who Loved Numbers. Through interviews with Cambridge Dons and Mrs. Ramanujan in Madras, the film explored Ramanujan's all too brief life and extraordinary contributions to mathematics. It ended on a rather wistful note. While Ramanujan's chief collaborator, Hardy, would be remembered through a plaque at Trinity College, Cambridge, there was no plaque or any other form of remembrance for Ramanujan, whom Hardy and Littlewood had ranked among the greatest mathematicians in history. Just imagine that. In 1989, on a visit to Madras, now Chennai, over a cup of tea with my uncle K. Padmanabhan, I mentioned the PBS film on Ramanujan. To my great delight and marvellous surprise, my uncle offered to arrange a meeting for me with Mrs. Ramanujan. After dinner that very same evening, I was led into Mrs. Ramanujan's modest home in Triplicate. A frail old woman, 90 years old, with bright liquid eyes and a sweet smile, hard of hearing, welcomed me. As we sat down, I couldn't help but notice in that small and crowded space a magnificent bust of Ramanujan, which I was told was made by an American sculptor and gifted by a group of international mathematicians. It was an arresting presence, almost as if Ramanujan was there, that his presence was shining through the bust and dominating the room. His deep, penetrating eyes seemed to be staring into a faraway realm, almost privy to secret knowledge beyond the reach of us mere mortals. Mrs. Ramanujan spoke about her husband as if he had just passed away a few weeks ago. It was surreal. With tears in her eyes, she said, for him, it was just numbers, numbers and numbers almost in wonder, rotating her fingers. She said in Tamil, Kanakku, Kanakku, Kanakku. Numbers, numbers and numbers. And then she added rather sadly, No one remembers my husband anymore. No one comes to see me. Only you and a math teacher from England of Indian origin have visited me in the last 18 months. I was overcome with a sense of sorrow. As I stood up to leave, I presented her with a traditional gift of a sari and some fruit. I then leaned towards her and held her slender hand gently. I still remember the hand, the bluish green veins on her light skin and told her, you should consider yourself lucky, very fortunate, for having had the opportunity to love and care for your husband, a man who will go down as being one of the greatest mathematicians in history and as one of the greatest Indian heroes. A wonderful, almost grateful smile lit up her face almost like a young girl being complimented. As I walked out of her house, her foster son led me to a shop on the sidewalk that was selling some fine-looking watercolour paintings of Ramanujan. I bought a few of them. One of them showed a young boy Ramanujan in pigtails 
with a picture of the goddess Namagiri in the background. Another showed a young Ramanujan and an even younger, almost playful Janaki, his wife or to-be wife, sitting in front of the sacred fire reciting Vedic hymns at their wedding. As I walked towards my car that night, I couldn't help but visualize in my mind's eye a young man dying with pen and notebook in hand, furiously writing rarefied mathematical formulae. As Mrs. Ramanujan had recalled so movingly, for Ramanujan, it was only numbers, numbers and numbers. He lived and breathed numbers. He even felt pain, physical pain in terms of numbers. Kanak, kanak, kanak. Just think of the intense passion of that man. I wished I could do something to honour his name, but I was a banker living in New York and had no idea how I might memorialise Ramanujan. The idea came to me years later when, as head of the Augustia International Foundation, I thought it would be inspirational to have a bust of Ramanujan at the Augustia campus in Andhra Pradesh, which welcomes thousands of village children and government school teachers from across the country. We commissioned Jayaprakash Shirgaonka, a well-known Mumbai-based sculptor, to make the bust from four extant pictures of Ramanujan, one of which had made it to the 1962 commemorative stamp. A few months later, a youthful and handsome-looking bronze bust, 33 inches high and weighing 50 kilos, arrived at the campus, where it was unveiled by 2006 Ramanujan Prize winner Sujata Ramdore and members of the National Knowledge Commission in early 2008. And then, almost as it were, to set right the egregious oversight by Cambridge University, my father, K. V. Raghavan, a former trustee of Agastya, came up with the novel suggestion to gift Ramanujan's bus to Cambridge University. Sujata spoke to her friend John Coates at the Centre for Mathematical Sciences at Cambridge, who responded with alacrity and said they would be delighted to have Ramanujan's bust at Cambridge. Augustia also decided to gift busts of Ramanujan to three premier Indian educational institutions, namely the IIT in Madras, the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore, and the TIFR's Centre for Applicable Mathematics in Bangalore. All three occasions attracted a number of visitors. Notable among them were Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, uh, the father of India's Green Revolution, Mr. Narayana Murthy, the founder of Infosys, Dr. V. K. Atre, the former head of the DRDO, and Professor V. S. Ramamurthy, then director of the National Institute of Advanced Studies. In May 2010, my family and I had the pleasure of joining John Coates, Martin Highland, Tadashi Tokieda, and Sally Lowe for lunch at John's office in Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Lunch was followed by a visit to the Centre for Mathematical Sciences, where we spent time admiring Ramanujan's magnificent bust. Martin commented, that Ramanujan's eyes seemed to be gazing at some faraway realm. In John's words, literally hundreds of students will pass the bust each morning, and it will be a constant reminder to our large student body in mathematics, who comes from all over the world, of the greatness of Indian mathematical thought. In 2017, Sujata Ramdore, now a professor of mathematics, and Canada Research Chair at the University of British Columbia, and her husband Ram Ramadore very kindly offered to donate money to create the Ramanujan Math Park, or RMP as it's now called, on the Augustia campus. Designed by Sujata and VSS Shastri, a math communicator, and actively supported by Mahavir Tyagarajan and Ajit Basu from Augustia, the RMP occupies 5,000 square metres 
and is supported by a grant from the State Bank of India Mutual Funds and the H.T. Parekh Foundation. It was inaugurated on December 22nd, Ramanujan's birthday and India's National Mathematics Day in 2017. In 2018, a film of the Ramanujan Math Park was shown at the International Conference of Mathematicians in Rio de Janeiro by Sujata and Tadashi Tokieda, now of Stanford University. And then with support from Ravi Kailas in 2020, a bust of Ramanujan was sent to MIT in Boston, a project after my own heart, the first time that Augustia had gifted a Ramanujan's bust to a premier American university. In 2020, again, the RMP's platonic exhibits were ranked among the best mathematics exhibits from the top 15 math museums of the world. A small and perhaps fitting tribute to Ramanujan. Thousands of children and school teachers visit the RMP every year to experience the excitement and joy of learning mathematics hands-on. They get to see math in real life and in nature. Perhaps someday, one of them might shine like a brilliant star, as Ramanujan once did and continues to do so. When I do visit the RMP and stop to stare momentarily at Ramanujan's bust, I can't help but remember my meeting with Mrs. Ramanujan on that warm night so many years ago in Madras, now Chennai, and wonder what she might have said had she known that a math museum named after her great husband in a remote rural area in India would one day find a place among the great math museums of the world.